Moin ihr wunderbare Menschen des Interwebs, ich begrüße euch ganz herzlich zurück zu meinem Let's Play von The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Wir haben die nächste Verhandlung erreicht, sind bei der nächsten Verhandlung angekommen, was auch die letzte Verhandlung in diesem Fall sein wird. Ich bin mal gespannt, was dabei jetzt rauskommt. Ich hatte ja im letzten Part hatte ich ja, glaube ich, meinen Verdacht geäußert, dass ich glaube, dass Olive Green eventuell ähm, unseren äh, Shamespear vergiftet hat. Aber wir haben leider immer noch keine Info bekommen, ob jetzt Gift in dem Tee war oder nicht. Weil ich habe dann auch noch nicht wirklich eine Erklärung, was wäre, wenn kein... Äh, was wäre, wenn Gift in dem Tee gefunden worden wäre? Also was wäre dann die Lösung, wie Herr, Herr Natsume das hätte nicht sein können? So rum. Ich habe gerade irgendwie meinen mein Satz ein wenig verwurschtelt. Da müssen wir... Ach du meine Güte. Ich glaube, Mr. Natsume ist wieder eine Katze. Das ist es dann, Mr. Naruhoro. Yes, it's time to put an end to this now. To the miserable curse that has been plaguing Mr. Natsume to everything. And in my own small way, I shall do everything I can to help you. I always appreciate your help, Miss Suzato. Suffering, Sosiki, selfishly s sidelined. Good morning to you too, Mr. Natsume. Good morning, good morning, welcome student Mr. Norohoro. Listen to you two chatting away happily as if the main player of today's trial isn't here. Why would you do that, why? Oh dear, we didn't mean to cause offense Mr. Natsume. I thought perhaps that because you had your eyes shut so tightly you were meditating, finding inner calm. It seemed wrong to disturb you. I was waiting. What's the matter Mr. Natsume, you seem different somehow today. Why naturally, that's because of attained spirit spiritual enlightenment. The path of literature <laughs> you see is a journey to discover one's own death. Literature? I think it's so, it would be so. Or such like. That's the sort of morning conversation I was hoping for. That's why I had my eyes shut. I missed the signs, I'm afraid. Somehow. You will have to forgive me. And you mustn't talk of your path leading you to death, Mr. Natsume. That was just an example. Oh yes, there it is. Inner calm. You you barely came to see me at, at all yesterday. I, I was sure you'd abandon me and return to our beautiful long lost homeland. We've not even been in Great Britain a week yet. Yes, well, anyway. I intend to set everything straight in court today. I'm determined to uncover the truth. I've actually reached an important decision myself. What sort of decision? I shall fill you in after the trial. Alright. It would seem... Mr. Shams isn't coming today after all. It's a very clever message, I think. My dear fellows, you must win this battle on your own merits. It's a very clear message, I think, that he's overslept again. Good great detective, my arch nemesis. Long may he stay away if you ask me. Defendant and your legal representative. The trial is about to begin. Make your way into the courtroom immediately. Today, once again, we face the Reaper. And when the Reaper stands for the prosecution, the defendant's fate is sealed. But I don't believe in that legend any more than I believe in Soseki-san's curse. The truth is hidden here somewhere, and I won't let it escape me. I have to keep believing in my client and keep fighting to the very end. That's all. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I call upon the con counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare the willingness to proceed. The prosecution is ready. Yes, the defense, the defense is ready. Very good, and now I call upon the six ladies and gentlemen of the jury, chosen by lot to represent the will of the people in this trial. Are you ready to proceed? 
Absolutely. Justice will be done. You mark my words. I feel obliged to say I feel especially ruthless on days when my head is sitting just right. Oh, well, I wonder if you could adjust my head for me, and please, be as ruthless as you like. Thieves deserve to die if you ask me, especially gas thieves. I've, I have no sympathy for the man at all. Look, I said it yesterday and I will say it again now. I don't have time for this. I've got my own problems. Oh, may the Lord show us all the light here and lead his flock to a righteous verdict again today. Now, Lord von Zeeks, what can you tell us? The prosecution's report, please, for the court. In relation to the theory expounded by the defense yesterday regarding the defendant's tea. So he does have the results. Before the prosecution delivers the black news about the black tea belonging to the black guard and the dog. Ray, allow me a moment to savor a liquid of a more sanguine view. In fact, I will def I will defer to the good good detective for the report. Here's to you, Inspector. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. As indicated by the defense, we found a bar of soap just outside the victim's window in the snow. And there was indeed a frozen reddish liquid in a little depression on the top of it. Yes, that's the tea. That's what Mr. Natsuma brought with him that night. Well, the brines at the yard analyzed it, and yes, you were right, it was tea. And there wasn't a trace of, of the poison or any other toxic substance in it. No poison at all? In other words, the tea that the defendant brought with him to the victim's room is innocent. It's in the clear. What a re revelation. As I suspected. This makes it quite clear. The defendant, Mr. Soseki Natsume, is blameless here. My learned friend is jumping to conclusions again. A typical Nipponese reaction. Yes, it's true. No poison was found and a few drops of liquid recovered from the soap on the window ledge. But what logic is that? Would you take a drop from the Thames and conclude that the water in the ocean isn't salty? My word, the water in the ocean is extremely salty, Council. Exactly. Unfit for drinking, just as the victim's tea was on the night in question, as the court has already heard. Bitter was the precise word from the lips of Mr. William Shakespeare. Whom the prosecution now calls back to the stand. Very well, I will uphold the prosecution's request. Mr. Shamespear. Yes, it sounds like we're going to have another confrontation with our theatrical friend. I leave. Show Mr. Shamespear to the scent. Mr. William Shamespear, the victim of this despisable crime. Oh heaven, oh hell, do you command me to remember? Or do... Was I, Shamespear, did have a belly full of the full fluid given in mine innocence. Yes, but as was revealed in yesterday's proceedings, the witness is not as innocent as we had perhaps first been led to believe. By using bars of soap such as this, he has been stealing gas from the supply company, yes. One may smile and smile and be a villain. Or though the was I, Shamespear, did have a room full of this wheat fuel given. That's right, fellow Jiros, don't forget, this man is a rotten thief. I haven't forgotten, kept all that about the ice coins a highly secret, didn't you? You should have owned up sooner. Arrest him, I say. Arrest him at once and let him feel the sting in my tail. Oh, indeed, by dint of vile and coward cowardly means have I plotted to further mine own ends, I confess. Though what's not pardon my sins, of that I am sure. If you acknowledge your wrongdoing, what exactly are you doing here? Our words die many times before their deaths, and for a coward such as I, death well deserved. Death be well deserved, but what a death, a still greater crime, passive unpunished. For though 
the hairy-faced gentleman of Farther East, then Verona did contrive to poison me. But there was no poison in the tea found in your room. The police have attested to that. What the defense would assert as an inconsistency will quickly be cleared up by the witness's testimony. Is that not so, Mr. Shamespear? Verily, my leash, I would most gladly speak. Very well, let the witness testify to explain this inconsistency. Tell the court why it is that poison apparently entered your body, though none was found in the tea. Okay. The tea inconsistency. The Japanese man did come to my chamber with tea brewed in a pod. There was in my cup alone that the wicked Miss Grimm secretly poured his wicked poison, whilst Feigning distraction in our debate, Nier did a drop of his own drink past his lips. When he departed by and by, I did use the tea that remained in his cup to make my coins of ice. Was this no surprise that poison be not found in the tea I did pour into the molds of soap? Um, okay, Moment. Ich glaube, ich habe ich hab den Widerspruch schon gefunden. Ich muss nur noch mal ganz kurz gucken, äh, welches, welcher Satz das war. The poison was slipped into the cup after the tea had been poured. A normal way for poison to be administered in my experience. Right, otherwise it would be disastrous if the poisoner were to mix up the cups, for instance. But no poison bottle was found at the scene. Because, quite simply, the Nipponese took the bottle back to his own room. The absence of a vessel containing the poison only becomes problematic when considering suicide. I knew that. By now, it should be perfectly clear. A bar of two of cheap soap is wholly insufficient to wash the deep stains of guilt from the accused sands. Sirs, madams, this true that I, Shakespeare, be a common thief of gas. But, but, listen here, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore would I lie, verily I have no cause, I have not to lose. Thank you for your testimony, witness. Counsel, proceed with the cross-examination. Yes, my lord. Okay. Und zwar... The Japanese man did come to my chamber, yeah. Um, it was in my cup alone that the wicked... Nine. Whilst feigning distraction in our debate, Nier did a drop of his own drink past his lips. Und hier können wir die uh, teacups präsentieren. Und die beweisen das Gegenteil. You claim that Mr. Natsume didn't drink a drop of tea on the night in question. But that's impossible. How, how, how... Job logic? What is this, ya dark eclat fiend? The two teacups from the scene, one used by the victim and the other by the defendant. Have a clear difference between them. One that represents incontrovertibly proof. Incontrovertibly? What difference? Look at the inside of the cups. Just here, there's a clearly visible ring. It's a tea ring. Commonplace enough. Indeed, such stains occur all too readily when one leaves tea in the cup for a while. And yet, Mr. Natsume's cup has not has no such ring. Good lord, you're right, it's completely clean. And prefis pre pre thee, sir, what makest makest thou of it? Exactly what Mr. Natsume told the court yesterday, the Japanese saying he quoted. Drink tea while it's hot. That's right, yes. The jittery Mr. Natsume was true to his usual self that night and drank his tea in no time. As you claim in your testimony, he didn't touch a drop of his tea. The ring would have developed on the, ins on on the inside of his cup as well. After the several hours, the tea was left standing. In short, Mr. Shakespeare, you clearly lied to the court. 
get thee to a nunnery. As a rule, I fill my hello chilies up to seven times during any one trial. You might want to keep that information to yourself. Yet, on occasion, tedium distracts me and I pour my times than I than I intended until the bottles dry. Your drinking habits are fascinating, but irrelevant. On the contrary, they illustrate the fickleness of human memory. To William Shakespeare. D d yes, my liege. Though you previously stated that you made the coins of ice from the leftover tea in the accused cup, could it be that you were perhaps mistaken? Could it be that, yes, perhaps there was some tea remaining in the small teapot left at the scene? A fact that had vanished from your memory until now. Hey, my leash, thou art a magician, but verily, this is though thou hast seen with thine own eyes that night. For though I was mistook, I did plan to use tea from the Japanese fellow's cup, but uh, when I looked it was empty, and thus did I use the dregs that festered in the teapot as my leash did suggest. <laughs> And you have suddenly remembered now that you made a mistake before. Are we supposed to believe that? People's memories are imperfect, my learned friend, which is why we rely on evidence instead. But in any case, it makes no difference. The victim's most recent testimony tells us two things of note. Firstly, that the poison was put into the victim's teacup only. And secondly, that this spoiled cup was not the source of the insipid ice coins that have bewitched this cord. The prosecution makes a fine summary of the facts. Die Fakten, die er sich gerade so hindreht, wie es ihm passt. Furthermore, that testimony remains valid and full in full support of the established facts. In other words. The inconsistency claimed by the defense simply does not exist. What does this mean then? We do declare. It means there is no issue with the gas thief's testimony. Apart from the bit about thieving us, obviously. My lords, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I do solemnly swear, after I did die in a group's grubbery alehouse that night, no did pass my lips, but the black tea given me by the Japanese, whose back be stooped as low as death. And on what did you dine, sir? Why, I did partake of my favorites, a brofess... As wouldn't be called soup, and a leaf as wouldn't be called salad. As in incelebrous a menu as the establishment where it was served. But you gods will give us some faults to make us men. Willingly would I suffer what punishment this seemed fit to serve a wicked thief of gas. But I pray a wise and noble fellows near forget this simple truth. That be one thing and this be another. Heroes all, your humble servant Shakespeare, doth entreat you punish the, Jap punish the Japanese fellow for his sins. If I may speak, my lord. Yes, Mr. Foreman. I believe you may have been dubbed by that rotten defense lawyer. By me? I do declare you may be right. We all know the wife, wife there was making coins of ice to keep himself warm. But this lawyer late says if he's stealing gas, he deserves a dose of poison, huh? He's been leading us up the garden path, that's what he's been doing. I really never said anything like that. But what we just heard from the victim, there has opened our eyes again. We have reached a decision this time, and we won't be swayed from it. The court acknowledges the position of the jury foreman, and will duly hear the jury's findings. What? No, you, you can't yet... 
Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will state your decisions now. Ich muss jetzt wirklich sagen, das wäre jetzt eigentlich schon traurig, wenn im Real Life eine Jury so eine Entscheidung treffen würde, ob, obwohl man gemerkt hat, wie offensichtlich Van Sieg sich gerade die Fakten so gedreht hat, wie es ihm gerade am besten passt, also für sich am besten passt. I hereby declare the jury to be in one accord. Happy day, oh, happy day. How is this happening? My lord, the defense asserts its rights to carry out a summation examination. Very well, the court upholds the defense's right. Typical, my learned friend is unable to accept the obvious truth. This trial will therefore enter its second summation examination immediately. Juros, the court calls upon each of you to state the grounds upon which you find the defendant guilty for the crime of which he is charged. Ja, aber bevor wir unsere Summation Examination starten, gibt es hier jetzt erstmal einen Cut. Ich bedanke mich ganz herzlich fürs Zusehen, hoffe ihr hattet Spaß und wenn ihr mögt, sehen wir uns sehr, sehr gerne im nächsten Part wieder. Bis dahin. Ciao.